Hey, what's guys? Welcome back to another Horus episode. Let's get into it. <sighs> yeah. You you guys are seeing this in October, doesn't? What I'm about, what I'm gonna say is irrelevant. <laughs> The old man was very happy with everything that I had cleaned. But I think Mr. Silton was even more happy with his mushrooms. It wasn't the days getting shorter or the evenings getting colder. It was the falling leaves that really made me feel sad. As we watched the trees blowing in the breeze, the old lady said, the leaves must fall before the blossom comes. She had already explained the seasons to me, so for once, I actually understood. But it didn't make me feel any better. The old lady obviously heard enough of my moping, and said, Right, next week we're going to have a party. For some reason she insisted that we were all going to wear costumes. Heather was very excited and said, I've got some perfect ideas. Halloween. Oh yeah. I guess, I guess this works for October. It was terrifying. What's with all the Egyptians? Everyone was dressed like someone else. I think I was meant to be some kind of pumpkin, as everyone kept shouting, "It's the Great Pumpkin!" Still, at least Mr. Silton was having fun telling everyone his joke. And, I suppose Heather's costume was quite flattering. Minecraft? <laughs> I can't tell. After what seemed like forever, everybody left, and things got back to normal. Heather was allowed to watch a scary film before she went to bed, but I had to help Alice and Mr. Deck clean up. I wasn't happy about this, but the old man said if I was quick, then I could watch the end of the film with them. Alice was vacuuming, and Mr. Deck was taking down the decorations. So I thought I should clean up the plates and glasses. The ear-splitting sound was the fire alarm. As usual Mr. Deck, blamed Mr. Silton, saying he was probably smoking one of his jazz cigarettes. But then the professor appeared. He said that there was something burning in the kitchen. Alice looked confused, saying that she hadn't cooked anything since the morning. We were all surprised when Mr. Deck opened the oven. Inside was a large black cloak and a slightly burnt pair of men's underwear. Suddenly the old lady burst in. She looked terrified. She kept shouting, there's someone on the roof. When we went outside, it slowly became obvious that it was Mr. Silton. He was completely naked, and playing his guitar. 
he shouted down. When I finish this song, I'm going to fly. The old lady said, oh my god, I know this one, there's only about 30 seconds left. The old man then quickly turned to me and said, you know what to do. Uh, not that way. Uh, not that way. Well, Mr. Milton, Milton, whatever, you're dead, I got it. Restart as that's great. You expect me to be able to actually do this? I can't speed run this. By the time I had made it up to the roof, Mr. Silton was beside the edge. I tried to calm him down, but he was acting even more bizarre than usual. After an hour or so, Mr. Silton was fine. He said he had eaten some bad magic mushrooms. Part of me wondered why he hadn't doubled in size. Still, he was soon laughing and joking with the paramedics. One of them said he looked like the world's worst clown. I don't think Mr. Silton liked that. So he told his own joke. But that just made the other paramedic call him Marshmallow Marso. I don't think he liked that either, but at least he was still in one piece. A month or so later, Heather and I were playing video games, when the old man said he wanted me to come outside. He said it had been a year since I had arrived. So, he had a present for me. A bear? He placed the teddy bear high up on a wooden platform. He then told me I should try to pick it up. Try as I might, I couldn't reach the teddy bear. However, I still don't understand what happened next. Oh. You shut down?
Where am I? Was I dead? Was this heaven? It sort of looked like the basement bathroom. It was the shoes the old man was going to give me. I thought I might as well put them on. They were just the right size. The old man's hat fit me pretty good as well. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I wore it. Amazingly, the shoes allowed me to defy gravity. Or maybe it was the hat. Nothing is beautiful from every point of view. Part of the basement was flooded, and the stairs had collapsed. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew I wanted to get back upstairs. The gate was locked, I had to be careful, the electricity was going haywire in some places. This is gonna hurt my brain. Fuck. Whoa. How long had I been asleep? Months? Years? I was so confused. Where had everybody gone? Looks like years, buddy. Looks like it's been a few years. I was slightly scared, this was the first time I had been outside on my own. That's copyright, okay. Uh, excuse me, that is highly copyrighted music. And the sound effects, so, okay. This is copyright. I knew what I had to do. 
This had to be my purpose. I would clean a million things, so I could become a real boy. Whatever that meant. So the family left. I am alone. Isn't that weird though to see like abandoned mansions? Like the family obviously had trillions of dollars. And it's gone. My god, there's so much. The gate was locked. I would need a key to open it. I don't... I don't under... <laughs> don't understand the anti-gravity. So maybe it's magnetic or something. Is that really my purpose? To like, get junk and become a real boy? Like, that's kind of a sad purpose if you think about it. Collect trash, too. I was surprised to see an old man, but not as surprised as he was. It turned out he was blind. He was kneeling on the floor with his hand in a drain. When I asked him what he was doing, he said his cat had crawled into the pipes, and he was trying to get her out. He was very happy when I offered to help. He said there was no way we could reach her from here, so if I was willing, I could make my way through the sewers and get her from the other end. He said he would turn off the water for as long as possible, but I would have to run, as the pipes would soon fill up again. I happily agreed. So he gave me a key. He said this will open all the sewer gates. Go through here, then down the ladder, and through the big door at the bottom. I better run. Sheesh! Okay. I okay. I better oh. run. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. I thought you said you would turn it off for a few minutes. Bitch, does this look like a few minutes to you? Sheesh. Hold on. Hold on! Bitch! Oh. 
<laughs> Come on. I found the old man's cat. She was fine, if a little confused. I was horrified. It looked like me. But it shambled around like something from the film we watched on Halloween. So, so the family tried to make more or something? Although, what I don't understand is there's three of me here. Okay, that one moves a little bit faster. The man was happy to have his cat back. He looked so content with her sat on his lap. I told him about the thing I saw, but he just laughed and said, Those bastard robots, they're always getting up through the pipes. Don't worry though, it'll never get through the big doors. If I had my way, we'd have blown up the lot of them when we had the chance. I wasn't sure what he meant but I decided now wouldn't be the best time to tell him I was a robot. The man laughed, and said, Don't worry, I know who you are, and told me that he knew the old man. As we chatted, the man brewed himself some tea. He said that he had worked for the old man, in fact he had lost his sight in one of the old man's factories. Strangely, he smiled at this thought. He always did me right, he said. When I had my accident, the old man said he would look after me. And he did. He always made sure I had enough money, and he let me move into this old pumping station on his land. Which reminds me, I have something here for you. He rummaged around behind a cupboard. Then he continued saying, The old man wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but fate wouldn't allow it. He passed me a large box. It was empty. I thought about pretending to be excited, but the man said, Wait a minute. It's empty, isn't it? He slumped back in his chair. <laughs> I was robbed a few months ago. He said, almost in a whisper. It's strange. They took practically anything metal, but left loads of food and a brand new saxophone. The man looked sad, so I thought I would try to change the subject. I told him about my quest, to clean a million things. This at least made him smile. He said I was welcome to go back through the pipes anytime I wanted, as there were loads of old things in there that could be cleaned away. Yeah. Can I actually go in there and not die though? That, uh... Nope. Great. I have to run through all of it again. Oh, that was a bad idea. Why did you do that? I'm such an idiot. Okay. It's fine. Wait, why would I... Why would I think I'm doing that? Right? Yeah. <gasps> 
<laughs> the stuff is applying here. I hate this area. I shouldn't have come back to this area. Why did I come back to this area? I'm not going to be able to complete this area. Mainly because I'm absolutely stupid. Can't seem to do anything. How the fuck did I get this in the first place? Like that. Like that. I like that. A cleaning game. There's too many things that can't kill you in this game. It, is, it only needs to be a simple cleaning game. Why does it have to be hard? There's literally no point to moving water and the electricals in the sewer. You have an unrealistic amount of literally everything. I should kill myself right there, yeah. In game, of course. Bitch, haha, <laughs> you thought you were gonna kill me? Nah. It's myself. Haha, <laughs> you fucking badass toes that you don't have. All this game. It's like six o'clock. You know, just wanted to play a fun game. Yeah. Get over, get over, get over, get over, get out. Never come back. Yeah. Okay. Assuming if anyone in the family is still alive, it would be the daughter. That's a machine gun. coming from one of the bedrooms, but the stairs were blocked by a wall of fire. <laughs> Idiot, I'm not. Oh! The people screaming turned out to be a man, a woman, and their children. They were confused and terrified. At first the man looked like he was ready to fight me. But after I convinced them that I was there to help, he calmed down. There was no way I could carry them all at once, so the children went first. And the mom and dad go bye bye. I dropped the children off at the front door and promised them that I would be back with their parents. I was getting much worse, so the woman went next. Can't they just break a... Ah, uh, well, no, that's a bad idea, never mind. <laughs> when we got to the front door, all the woman said was, Thank you, please hurry.
Um, I can't. Where the fuck am I going? Wait a minute. Is this? No, 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 no. Aha! <laughs> this makes zero sense. I can go through the ceiling. Oh, he's dead. By the time I managed to get back, the man was unconscious. I had to pick him up quickly, as I could tell the house was going to collapse at any moment. Jerry, you should have laid off the donut to my guy. Good lord. Thank you guys so much for watching the series. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Where is he? There he is. I helped the family set up a tent so they had somewhere to stay. The kids were excited as they got to camp outside, but I think they knew they had just lost their home. Yeah. When I mentioned my quest to clean a million things, the man said I should look through the rubble of the house, as they had no use for it. So, when everyone was making dinner, I looked through the wreckage. There wasn't anything I could clean, but to my astonishment, I found a TV set and a games console. With a bit of fiddling I was able to get them to work. So I sat playing games with the kids until their parents said it was bedtime. As we talked, the man opened a bottle of wine. I asked what had happened, why was everything so ruined? The man looked at the woman, then the woman sighed and said, There was a war. Yes. A war. Said the man. One side of the planet attacked the other, and before we knew, it was all over. Everything gone. Everything destroyed. Well, it's late, said the woman. We should really get some sleep. Help yourself to anything you need, and we'll see you tomorrow. So... In the morning, I asked the man if he knew what had caused the fire that had destroyed their house. The man smiled, crap old house, bad wiring, constant electrical surges from the unreliable power plant, take your pick. He said, Our if sons. we had the money, we'd move to the mainland. But we can barely feed ourselves, let alone buy a new house, so for now we're left here with the rest of the scum. But he did say I should head to the mainland, as there would be plenty there for me to clean, and a better quality of rubbish. The man said, before the war, my lovely wife used to be a fisherman. Fisherwoman? Fishing person? <laughs> I used to catch fish, interrupted the woman, and, seeing as you saved us all from a fiery end, maybe you would like to borrow my boat to get to the mainland. I was a little scared. But then they gave me some captain software, and I was an old salty sea dog within minutes. Okay, after this, I took the done. fisherman's boat to the mainland. The fisherman was right. Everything was in pieces. Everything had been destroyed. I docked the boat, in some ruins. They must have once been a town. Okay. Well. That's all the time I have for today. I want to thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.